Kobe's Combat Chronicle is the new game mode released alongside the Film Red DLC pack for One Piece Pirate Warriors 4. The mode involves you training with or as Kobe by completing missions on each day of his training. With the early days being focused on story levels known as special training, occasionally interspersed in between, and later days becoming an endless mode reminiscent of a roguelike. I've played and studied this mode to learn as much as I can about it, and this video will be a deep dive that thoroughly explains it and reports my findings. When you start, you can select any character except for the Straw Hat Pirate members, which are locked until you finish the mode's story for the first time. The mode functions the same as Yamato's adventures, in that the difference between picking the title character and not picking them is that they'll still be present even if you don't play as them and will follow behind you as a companion. This doesn't affect gameplay much since missions don't focus around the companion and enemies don't really target them and they don't lose enough health to require protection. The only significant difference comes from the final story level, where the final boss will change depending on your character. If not playing as Kobe, he challenges you as his final test to complete his training. If you are playing as Kobe, then Film Red Shanks shows up to fight you instead. Once you pick a character, you are locked in as them for as long as you continue to play the mode. If you want to change characters, for example, after finishing the story and unlocking the Straw Hats, then you need to select new game and start all over again from the beginning. Interestingly, if you attempt to play the mode as a Straw Hat after unlocking them, it warns you that certain story characters do not have any dialogue during special training. What this means is that when playing the story missions, it completely skips all character dialogue and has the level progress instantly to the next objective after finishing the previous one since you don't have to wait for everyone to finish talking anymore. Not sure why this happens, as the base game story levels don't do this, and Yamato also shows up in the same way as the Straw Hats in the final story level of this mode, but it doesn't change anything for them and NPC Yamato still shows up, so not sure why the Straw Hats are treated differently. Maybe the developers also thought Yamato would join the crew and changed it last minute? Either way, this change stays true up to the final story mission for most Straw Hats, but Luffy's final story level not only switches back to working like usual, but is also unique from the other characters' final levels. Normally, Luffy is an ally from the start of the mission and changes sides along with his crew and Yamato to fight you and Kobe after the initial fights with Kaido's crew. Luffy then revives and changes into Gear 5, and after being beaten, you fight either Kobe or Film Red Shanks as stated previously. When playing as Luffy, you take his place in the mission, and when Kobe challenges Luffy as usual, he immediately changes sides to fight you early, since you are Luffy. The other Straw Hats and Yamato still switch sides, so you fight them like normal, with Kobe effectively replacing Luffy. After this fight, the level finishes since you've already beaten Kobe and Shanks doesn't show up. Now. Onto the gameplay. Kobe's Combat Chronicles main levels are split into five segment chunks, with each segment being a day of Kobe's training. You start on an existing map and each day takes place in a different territory on the map. When you finish a day, a circle known as a midpoint will appear that teleports you to the next territory after standing in it for a certain amount of time. This continues for five days and upon reaching the end of the fifth day, the level ends and you are given your results. At this point, you can suspend your game and come back to continue later, or start again. This also counts as a checkpoint that you'll return to if you die, before finishing the next 5 days. As you progress, the difficulty level, soul rewards, and soul percent bonus will increase. You receive soul rewards at the end of each 5 day chunk, and the percent bonus affects the chance of extra souls dropping from enemies along the way. At the beginning of a new chunk, you will be asked to select one of three temporary power-ups that can help out by boosting things like damage dealt, damage taken, and movement speed. They can boost upgrade material drop rates, and can even add healing opportunities. These boosts last until the end of the five days they were selected for, meaning they don't stack and you'll need to pick a new one every five days. The options are also random so you can't rely on a particular boost every time. Each day consists of one main mission that must be completed in order to unlock the midpoint and progress to the next day, and an optional submission that can be completed to increase your ranking at the end of the 5 day chunk. These submissions are the same as the ones you can encounter in the treasure log, 
and also include events newly added in this update. The main missions are also new events that offer unique challenges from the usual missions, some of which are less of a challenge and more of an annoyance. In particular, two missions worth bringing up are the Guess the Right Order and Reach the Goal Without Being Spotted missions. The Reach the Goal mission has an X appear on the map that you must navigate to without being spotted by the patrolling scouts. If they spot you, then the goal disappears and they spawn additional strong enemies that must be defeated before the goal can reappear. This one is annoying because the goal doesn't detect that you've reached it until all of the character dialogue has stopped, which gives the scouts plenty of time to find you and prevents you from just waiting next to the goal. This shows that waiting for dialogue continues to be a problem that carries over from the main game, especially now that if you try to end a day after finishing a side mission, but before the dialogue telling you it's finished can complete, then it won't count and negatively affects your score. Thankfully, I managed to discover a trick to alleviate some of this annoyance. I learned that the goal in question is actually tied to a single minor enemy that doesn't lose health until the game registers you as having reached the goal. Similar to other missions in this mode with undefeatable enemies that disappear after the mission is complete. This means you can manually push the goal far away from the scouts and wait for the dialogue to end in peace, which is very helpful to avoid getting caught and prolonging the mission even further. Unfortunately, the Guess the Order mission doesn't really have a special trick as far as I can tell. This mission spawns in three unique enemies and tells you to defeat them in the correct order. The only indication of a correct order, however, is a message that pops up after defeating all three that tells you how far into the correct order you got before getting it wrong. Meaning you need to deduce the correct order through arduous trial and error. Feel free to correct me in the comments if you found any special tricks, but it seems that it simply involves guessing at random and hoping you get as close as possible, so that the subsequent failure texts can clue you into the correct order. Getting it wrong over and over is annoying and a huge time waster, and can significantly affect your score at the end. Although thankfully, time isn't as important a factor in that as usual. Speaking of which, while the story levels use the usual scoring system of time and KOs, training days add an extra component and rank you based on the amount of submissions you've completed over the five days. Since there's only one submission a day, max rank for this category comes from getting five out of five missions done. It's pretty simple to fulfill, as long as you're beating both the main and submissions each day. KOs are also easier to get S rank in this mode, since the amount needed has been lowered from 2000 to 1500. The other interesting point introduced is that while all three categories contribute to your rank, you only need two S ratings to get an overall S rank. Once again, if your third category is too low, then your total rank will decline, but there is no higher grade for getting all three at S than there is for only getting two so there's less pressure on trying to play perfectly, and things like time aren't as strict anymore. The mode begins with a story level to serve as an introduction and tutorial, and then enters a cycle of encountering a new story level every 10 days of training. This continues until the final story mission at day 50, making for a total of 6 story missions. After finishing the story, the mode becomes an endless gauntlet of daily training that continues on for as long as you wish to play it. It still keeps the ability to suspend every 5 days, but now, if you lose at any point, you'll get sent all the way back to day 51, no matter how far ahead you are. This turns into a risk-reward scenario where you can progress further and further for increasingly better rewards and higher difficulty, with temporary power-ups to help you on the way, but losing means having to start again. However, if you do end up losing at any point post day 51, the game still gives you the standard retry or quit option letting you retry the same 5 day level you just failed with no penalty. So failure doesn't actually mean instantly returning to the start, only the player's refusal to retry does. From the very beginning of the mode onwards, there are three factors that increase as you progress through training days, and continue to climb post day 51. These are the difficulty level, soul drop rate percent, and completion rewards. The difficulty level starts at 1 with the opening story mission, and increases with days of training by a changing amount depending on whether you're pre or post day 51. Story levels don't increase the difficulty further and instead take from whatever the most recent difficulty level was. For the first 50 days, the level goes up by 2 every 5 days until day 50 where it reaches level 19. From then on, it increases by 1 level every 10 days. 
Surprisingly though, once it reaches level 29 on day 141, it stops increasing no matter how much further you go. The implication was that it would keep increasing forever, but there is indeed a difficulty level cap that is two levels higher than the current character level cap. This will no longer be the case next update when the final soul map releases and the character level cap will increase to 30. Next is soul drop rate percent, which increases the chance of enemies dropping extra souls during gameplay. Story chapters do not benefit from this bonus and therefore don't list it. The percentage starts at 5% on day 1 and increases by 5% every 5 days until it reaches 50% on days 46 to 50. From day 51 onwards, it instead increases by 3% until it reaches 95% on days 121 to 125. From here, it increases by only 1% every 5 days, until it reaches 100% on days 146 to 150. This is the cap, and just like the difficulty level, it will no longer increase from this point on. Finally, we have the completion rewards. These are the rewards you get guaranteed for finishing each 5 day chunk and consist of the existing sizes and colours of souls. Story missions do not have completion rewards and instead just inform you of the completion reward from the next 5 days. Completing a 5 day chunk with S rank adds a bonus soul reward in addition to the existing ones. The extra souls that have a chance to drop from enemies, which are boosted by soul drop rate percent, are random, but these rewards stay consistent and are a reliable source for souls that set an expected minimum that can increase with luck. For a quick refresher on soul types, they come in 5 colours that correspond to 5 different factors you can upgrade on soul maps. Blue for HP, green for stamina, orange for defence, red for attack, and white for unlocking and upgrading skills. They also come in small, medium and large sizes with larger sizes being rarer and upgrades requiring bigger souls as they increase in level. The rewards start from days 1 to 5 by giving you one small soul each of the four stat increase colours, with S rank giving one small skill soul for a total of one of each colour. This repeats for the next 5 days, then on days 11 to 15, the soul sizes change to medium with the same colours, and this repeats once as well. The next 10 days follow suit by increasing the size to large. Then, on days 31 to 35, the sizes go back to small, but the amount of souls increases to 3 each. Same goes for the S rank souls. The rewards no longer repeat from this point and change every 5 days instead of 10, as they grow to medium and then large. On days 46 to 50, the size and amount goes back to 3 small, but now, the colours change to include all types in the base reward, with the S rank reward changing to two more of every colour at the same size, for a total of five each. Then the same again for three to five medium all, and then three to five large all. This cycle of small, medium, large then repeats all the way until days 141 to 145, only being interrupted on days 96 to 100, by having 3 small, 3 medium and 3 large all at once, with S rank giving another 2 medium, seemingly because that was next in the cycle's pattern. Days 146 to 150 are similar, but give 5 of each size, plus 2 large from S rank once again following the pattern it would have replaced. Every 50 days seem to count as a big milestone that gives larger rewards than usual. From this point, the small, medium, large pattern continues in terms of size, but the amount increases once again to 5 of each soul, with S rank now adding another 5 for a total of 10. Once reaching days 196 to 200, the big reward is 10 small, 10 medium and 5 large plus another 5 large from S rank for a total of 10 of each size and colour. The amount of souls this mode gives is huge and is massively worth it for the time investment as you can easily max out the current soul maps and then refill your soul reserves ready for the next one. I could keep going, but I'd be here forever and this video already took long enough to make, so hopefully this is a good enough idea for how this aspect of the mode progresses the more you play. In conclusion, Kobe's Combat Chronicle is a welcome addition to the game that provides effectively endless content as it will keep randomly generating new levels that will continue for as long as you wish to play it which in turn rewards you with plentiful souls that increase the more you play. 
The mode has a decent amount of main quests and lots of side quests to choose from that should keep it feeling mostly fresh, although since it's random, you might get lots of repeats of one mission type and barely ever see some of the others, which is a downside. The mode is also heavily catered toward only playing one character, with attempting to play the mode with other characters becoming tedious due to needing to start again from the beginning and play for a few hours just to finish day 50, let alone get back to the max difficulty. Surprisingly, none of the progression elements are affected by your score, and it doesn't save your score anywhere either, so you can just skip everything other than the main missions to speed up the process significantly with no repercussions. But it still takes time, especially with how long character dialogue takes to finish in some missions. It's nice to be able to play the story levels again, especially to see the differences in the final story mission, but having the option to skip to day 51 would make picking another character much more approachable and easier to test every character at the current highest level content. However, even though it is currently the highest difficulty level content in the game at two levels higher than the current max, it doesn't feel quite as tough as level 20 story mode did back in base game, where max level was 18. It might just be that newer characters are really strong, soul map upgrades and skills have made everyone overpowered, or that story mode had modifiers to make things tougher than usual, but despite enemies having a decent amount of health later on, they never really feel as dangerous and I'll still struggle a bit to get to low health for max damage most of the time. Damage does add up over time, especially later on where enemies will start doing more damage, and eventually you'll find yourself in need of healing despite all the defensive options available to you. Healing items do not drop from enemies in this mode, which is a welcome change from existing modes as you don't have to worry about accidentally losing cheat death and attack and defense boosting items drop much more frequently. But it also means that you are completely reliant on either skills or temporary power-ups. The temporary power-ups are nice since you probably only want to heal a little and you don't have to manage it afterwards since it expires unlike skills that require loadout management in between. Earlier on, the heal power-ups can heal a bit much and can dampen your damage while you slowly wait for enemies to lower your health again, but later on, when enemies deal more damage, it balances out to being safe from the heals without healing too much. A good option from the skill side is the new Guts skill that revives you once after reaching zero health. Even at max level, it only refills a small amount of health, providing safety at low health, while allowing a quick return to optimal cheat death threshold. This mode overall is quite fun, and the endless levels provide a lot more game to play that isn't too easy, but could stand to be harder. It might become a little outdated after the next soul map, but who knows, maybe they'll increase the difficulty level cap. Oh well, we'll see. I still enjoyed it regardless, and the new side missions and dialogue were a fun treat. Let me know what you think in the comments. That'll be it for this video. I hope it was worth the long wait. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.